Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our host for Redefining Medicine is Dr. Erica Schwartz. For more than 20 years, Dr. Erica has been at the forefront of advanced patient care, taking the best from conventional and integrative medicine and applying them to prevent disease. Dr. Erica is a distinguished AFRM faculty member in disciplines ranging from hormone therapy, peptide therapy, and IV nutritional support. Welcome to Redefining Medicine. Today, we're really thrilled to be speaking with Dr. Aristo Borjani. He is an immunologist. He is a PhD. He's published more than 220 articles on immunology. He has dedicated his career to figuring out how we are immunologically compromised by diet, pathogens, and toxins. So I am overwhelmed by having you here and I can't wait to hear what you have to say to us. Thank you so much, Dr. Schwartz, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here <laughs> and share it's with my you pleasure. and share with you uh, any knowledge I have about immunology and the immune system. Well, you wrote about the connection between food and immuno immune changes, and about the reactivation of viruses and how they are changing to become even more just like us. Yeah. So, uh, so tell about, us about 58 it. years ago, <laughs> I took my first course in immunology. And the professor who started teaching us the first day said that, students, you better pay attention to this class because the future of medicine is immunology. So as you can see today, we are sitting here talking to each other. Yes, he was right. The future was and is immunology. Uh, throughout these years, I did work on the role of environmental triggers on the immune system. Why is that? because the immune system probably is the most sensitive part of our body to the environmental factors, whether those factors are toxic chemicals, whether those factors are foods that we don't digest properly, or pathogens. So I did work in this area about the role of environmental triggers uh, and the their effect on the immune system that can result in inflammatory, autoimmune, and neurodegenerative disorders. So that pretty much covers everything. Yes, yes. <laughs> so you're a scientist, and you said to me, he loves science, which yes. is why you're doing what you're doing. Now, explain to the people who are watching, who are providers, the people who are involved either in clinical or research about how is the immune system affecting the outcome? Before answering the question, I would like to uh, emphasize that in most of these disorders that I mentioned before, when a patient goes to a doctor, in majority of the times when they take history, they emphasize your mother, your father, your grandfather, your grandmother, and they talk about the genes. Yes, my message today is that genes are important, but believe me, environmental factors are much, much more important than the genes. I agree with you. And I'm not just agreeing with you because you're the immunologist here, but I believe, and I get that question a lot, that the genes are only activated if immunologically 
their stimuli that will make them we get call activated. that epigenetics exactly correct? right meaning how much the environmental factors affecting our genes and our gene expressions that could result in health or in diseases right and the immune system is a major major player in this in these conditions right and we're seeing it more and more every day yes so let's take example of rheumatoid arthritis an autoimmune okay. disease okay. yeah my mother did suffer from uh, rheumatoid arthritis osteoarthritis total knee replacement twice but as you I'm can sorry. see i'm sitting here healthy of course. At, at 79 okay you're 79 yes oh my god so so and then i have uh, or i had i lost some of my uh, sisters and brothers but i have another i had nine sisters and brothers none of them got arthritis amazing so is it the gene or the environment yes the genes as we said plays a role but the environment is much much more important than the genes it takes between 3 to 20 years to develop an autoimmune disease such as rheumatoid arthritis as you know please elaborate yes yes of course because we don't go to <clears throat> bed and wake up with an autoimmune disease with alzheimers with parkinsons and this is the, maybe my central message during our conversation. If it takes three to 20 years to develop arthritis or other autoimmune diseases, Alzheimer's maybe 20 to 40 years, there is always window of opportunity for intervention. And that's really the message of functional medicine, anti-aging medicine. Correct. When a patient goes to specialist, in, let's say, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, again, they do some blood testing. And one of them is rheumatoid factor, correct? Right. But what is rheumatoid factor, Dr. Schwartz? <laughs> okay. Well, rheumatoid factor. It's a marker. Yes, it's a marker, correct. Mm -hmm. But my question was, what is rheumatoid factor? It is IgM. Mm -hmm. our body producing against our own IgG. Mm -hmm. When our IgG becomes aggregated, binds to each other, right. then our IgM is produced against our IgG. We call that rheumatoid factor. But the next question is, why our IgG become aggregated? Right. So we make IgM antibody to the IgG. To the IgG which we call it again, rheumatoid right. factor. The answer to that could be infection, mm -hmm. could be food such as lectin, agglutinin, and could be um, toxic chemicals, which can bind to that IgG and form neoantigen, something new, which is combination between toxic chemicals plus our IgG, and therefore we make these antibodies. But unfortunately, they don't pay attention to that. They just say, okay, this is a biomarker. But why do we make these uh, you know, antibody against aggregated IgG? Why IgG becomes aggregated? If we ask that question, then we can find the trigger. And then when you remove the trigger, the patient will feel much, much better than just putting that patient on medication for many years to come. Well, because you're putting people on medication to treat a marker instead of treating the root, root cause. cause. Yes. So the question is, what is the root cause? And you said the root cause could be infection, could be environmental, what Toxic they're eating, toxic could be pathogens. Right. right, but we spend very little time on focusing on that. Yes. So how are we changing that? Yeah, uh, ex example of uh, uh, food. If we don't digest our food, especially when we get older and older, we have lack of digestive enzymes. That's why we have to take digestive enzymes. Right. Because you ask, how can we of you know, course. improve that? So uh, we don't digest the food. And simultaneously also, unfortunately, our gut microbiome has changed so much. We are completely have different um, gut ecology than our ancestors. 
right. in Africa, maybe they have the same bacteria they had right. you know, before. But in the Western world, unfortunately, everything has changed right. because of our bad diet and habits, I call that. Uh, and so change of gut microbiome can change our gut uh, permeability. Of course. So now undigested food, whether it is uh, casein from milk or gluten that everybody is talking about, but there are many more that nobody is talking about, such as lectins and the glutenins that is very high, hard, hard, which is very hard to digest. Undigested can get into the blood, will react against them, and those antibodies due to similarity between the structure of the food with human body, then those antibodies turn against us and damaging our tissue, then contributing to autoimmune disease. So if we find it is food in one patient, we can remove that from the diet. We can give them digestive enzymes. If it's toxic chemicals, also we can remove that. The best example is aluminum. Mm. You, know? you know how many people are cooking yeah, or aluminum. with aluminum uh, yeah, the, dishes. Yeah, the, the aluminum foil. Uh, yeah, aluminum foils yeah, at 450 it. degrees yeah. and all of that. But aluminum in our water is the worst. Yeah. Why they put aluminum in the water during filtration system and all of that? And they believe that aluminum is in and out. That's not true. That stinks. If you look at the structure of aluminum, AL3+. Right. What does that mean? Every plus get attracted to the minus. As soon as, and where do we have so many minuses? In our proteins. Of course. So as soon as aluminum gets into the gut, can, can bind to so many epithelial cells, right. and by itself contribute to leaky gut. Right. And, and so this is another example that how chemicals can affect our, leaky, our gut, causing leaky gut, and then entry of undigested food into the circulation autoantibody production against that. Uh, let me give you another example. If we drink too much alcohol, do you know what will happen? I drink alcohol, period. Okay, <laughs> yes, but alcohol gets into the blood, becomes acetaldehyde. Right. Aldehyde mm -hmm. covalently can bind to albumin or hemoglobin. Right. Now you have neoantigen which react against it and then autoantibody and autoimmunity. Finally, with pathogens, the pathogens, unfortunately, in order to survive, uh, and it's a kind of fight against human by the pathogens, by changing their structure during mutation, in order to uh, survive the immune cell attack. By doing that, they make their body to be their structure, their membrane proteins, such as spike protein, SARS-CoV-2, Epstein-Barr virus, herpes type 6, they become like our own structures. So when they become reactivated, we make antibody against them, but because of the similarity to human tissue, those antibodies are attacking us, resulting in autoimmunity. So here I gave you three different examples of environmental factors, food, toxic chemicals, and pathogens that could contribute to autoimmunity, but the same thing could be applied to neurodegenerative disorders because in my opinion, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's are kinds of autoimmune disease. I agree with you. I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you. The question is, how do we change? How do we get the medical community, the, the providers to understand the connection and what kind of testing should they do in order to find out, you know, what the patient, you know, when you're doing like testing for like food allergies or, you know, because everybody's gluten free and dairy free and everything free. And, you know, they went from low fat to, it, it's crazy because nobody's really reading the label to see what they're eating. So how do you get to help people to understand what they can do, because I don't know how much they can at this point. First of all, number one is education. 
mm. education, edu- education. Mm-hmm. That's exactly That's what, what, we do. what you are doing in here. Yeah. Yeah. F4M, functional medicine, others. However, when it comes to laboratory testing, I mentioned before, I have 50 years of experience. I don't want to be selfish, but I developed more than 350 laboratory assays, including food IgG in 1986. But unfortunately, there are so many bad laboratories who are interested in business only, not in the science. Uh, They report so many false test results. I I gave a talk this morning and we were talking about it, how, you know, it was about genetic testing and how we know, you know, it came out that one of the testing laboratories was like 40 to 60 percent false results. And why did anybody continue to do it? Why do people go to these labs? And how does a stupid doctor, because I'm a stupid clinician, I'm not a PhD, I'm not you, I don't understand the level at which you operate. How can I find, you know, at what point do I say, this lab is not right, let me find somebody else? I'm very happy that anti-aging medicine, at least for the upcoming in Las Vegas, there is a session about laboratory testing. Mm-hmm. I'll and interview I'm going you for to, it. And I am going to talk about importance of reliable test results. I can't wait for Las Vegas to listen to your talk and to continue interviewing you. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you so much for My today. My pleasure. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.